individuals. Of course, we don't have the capacity to do anything, nor do we have the knowledge, nor the know-how to do anything, nor the experience to make and, and to do anything at all. Yet, it's not, that's not what the believer relies upon. The tawakkul is upon Allah Azza wa Jal and His greatness and His infinite knowledge and wisdom, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and His infinite capacity, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's only once the believer as an individual taps into that. We all know that. Like, how many times have you heard that in your life? How many times have you read it? How many times have you maybe thought it to yourself? Innumerable. Innumerable. There's, there's so many times that it's come to, to mind if you were here, if you were there, if you were listening there, if you are watching here, if you are doing talking amongst your friends or whatever. But the reality of that is the question. Not that, you know, it's something that I can remember. Or something that I can Google, I can find that on, on, you know, on my phone or my iPad or my laptop or whatever it might be. That, that's not the, the condition that's going to save us. The condition is the individual to have the true reality of that in their own lives. And so it's that self-doubt that, that comes around us and the fact that, oh, is Allah going to help me? I'm not worthy. Yeah, no one's worthy. Who's worthy? If we compare any creation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who's worthy? Even, I mean, we don't say that because it's lack of respect to the Prophet of Allah sallam, but he's a creation. You know, Allah mentions in the, in, 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 uh, mata aw qutila. Fala in mata aw qutila, ran kalabtum ala aqabikum. That if the Prophet ﷺ was killed, or that he died, that you just you know you go back to what you were doing beforehand, and that's what happens to us on, on an individual basis. Whenever time, when any, anything happens to us that isn't in accordance with our whims and fancies, don't worry about the, the difficulties and trials and tribulations. When it's not in accordance with our whims and fancies, we despair. In Allah, oh this that, oh that this, oh. Why didn't it happen according to the way I wanted it to happen? And the answer to that is, it didn't happen the way I wanted it to happen because it's not the best thing for me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has infinite wisdom and knowledge and his infinite experience in making things occur when they should occur knows that if that thing that I wanted to happen happened, then it would have actually caused my destruction. Whether it's physical destruction, whether it's a mental, emotional or spiritual destruction, whether it's destruction in this life or destruction in the next life, that, would, that little thing that I wanted to occur, or big thing as it may be, if I wanted it to occur, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed it to occur in accordance with my whims, fancies, desires, wants, hopes, dreams, aspirations, then that would be the cause of my destruction. That's why it didn't happen. And until the believer can accept that fact and accept that point over and over and over and over and over, and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Nothing's going to change. That's how winning is done. That's how success is done. Like, you know, the world champion, name it. You pick a chess player. How did they become world champion chess player? They did it and did it and did it and did it and practiced until they became as good as they became. And it's no different in the affairs of our deen. It's no different in the affairs of our minds. It's no different in the affairs of our emotions. It's no different in the affairs of our spirit. It's exactly the same. It's exactly the same. That tenacity, that commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that acceptance of what Allah azza wa jal wills, that's the cause of our saviour. That's the cause of our success. That's the cause of our salvation. And until each one of us as individuals can accept that fact and move on, it's not going to happen. Think about it yourself. How many years have you been going around in circles about the same things over and over and over and over and over again? The over and over is a good one, eh? Over and 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 over again. Because we haven't come to accept that fact yet. What, can Allah make me fly? If He wants to, He can. Could I walk on water? If he, wanted, if he wanted me to, he could. It's not me that's the issue. It's not my capacity that's the question. It's, I don't have any. It's simple. There's not have any. La hawla wa la quwa, as the saying goes.
no, no, no capacity, no power whatsoever. So when the believer loses that, the despair, when we reach that despair for whatever um, minute a situation, the light changing when, it, when we didn't want it to change because we're running late to get to wherever we thought we wanted to go because in our own estimations, whatever, 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 whatever. Do you get it or do I have to go into every detail about the light changing? Yeah, the light changes, okay, when you're driving, when you miss the bus, miss the train, sleep in past your alarm clock, wh whatever simple things. So the, the, the consternation that an individual feels about that, the, the person's perturbed, it leads to despair in Allah. That little tiny thing that occurs leads to despair in Allah. You know what that means? Basically saying that Allah, you're not there anymore. That, that's, what, that's what that means. Like if you want to break it down, say, no, Allah, you're not there. I've got to do this. I've got to drive faster. I've got to run faster to catch the train. I've got to... And that's that little point that we've got to get over. And if we as individuals, as believers, as Muslims, inshallah, if we can't get over it, over and over. It's going to keep happening over and over. Why? Because Allah is trying to show us, right? Allah is trying to elevate us past that point. Allah is trying to, trying to take the training wheels off our bikes, so to speak. But we don't want to. So we're just going around and around saying, no, no, I like the training wheels. I feel comfortable with my training wheels. Leave my training wheels. Oh, I suppose, okay, no worries. Let's go round and 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 round. Sayyidina Khalid ibn Walid, right? He took a, uh, you know, let's, let's forget the war stories. No one, no one likes the war stories except young blokes. Right? He was proving to the, to the, to the people in his army and to the non-Muslims, he says that, look, even the, even the poison, I'm not saying drink poison, by the way. I'm just giving an example of the, of the yaqeen, the conviction that these people had. He said, even the poison cannot kill me except if it's by the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. If Allah has decreed for me to die, by poison I will die. If he has not, I will not. And he drank the poison. And he didn't die. Straight away. <laughs> right? He didn't die. So it's not, that we be, not, it's not that we're doing those things. Right? It's in our lives, the little things that happen to us. Mum didn't cut the crust off the sandwich. I don't know if that was back in the day that used to happen. People used to get the crust, crust cut off their sandwiches, right? If they did, oh, it's a big issue. Why? Well, you know, mom's trying to torture me. She's hate no, that's not. She doesn't hate you. No one hates you. No one's got time for you, really. Sorry to, I don't want to burst your bubble, but no one's got time to like worry about you that much. I know the whole world is jealous of you because you're good looking and you're intelligent and athletic and you know you got good fashion sense and you're popular and all that. But really, no one's got that time. In reality, it's Allah Azza wa Jal sending you the messages. And it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending me the messages. And it's up to me whether I'm going to listen to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if I do, it won't be around and around. It'll be up, 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 up. In terms of the, 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 the maratib, uh, you know, and the, the levels with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's up, 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 exponentially. Exponentially. Meaning that it could, you know, it's not one step after the other. It could be one step, a thousand, a hundred thousand, a million, a trillion, whatever it is. And that's easy for Allah to do. It's not even anything that Allah... It's not even a consideration to Allah. Azza wa but that's not the question. The question is me. The question is how I relate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the creation of Allah, time and space and the dealings I have with other people, and how I react to that, or how I act in regards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in reacting to those things that occur. And if, and if we don't have that, it's, it's not a question of anything but iman, of faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that conviction, that unwavering conviction in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that He can do and He will do, bi'ibnillah. Especially if I fast, especially if I'm one who prays, especially if I'm one who tries to do halal, do my best, Especially if I'm one of those people that recite the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. Especially if I'm, those pe I'm, of, I'm of those people that avoid the sinful things. I avoid going to places of ill repute. I avoid taking substances that are illicit. I avoid speaking the speech of those that uh, when Allah Azza wa Jal hated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those words are hated by Allah Azza wa Jal. I avoid illicit 
things with my body, sexual behavior, etc. I, I avoid that to the best of my capacity. Nobody's perfect. Perfection after the Prophet, that's the same, it doesn't exist. So if I'm one of those people, why not? If I'm one of those people that's doing my best, why not? Why not me? Why not? Why wouldn't Allah give me a shot? Why wouldn't he give me a chance? That's what I should be thinking to myself. Yeah, I'm not you know, better than anyone else. If we start to think that, then we're finished from the beginning. I'm not, but I'm not talking about comparing myself to anybody else. I'm talking about comparing myself to myself in relation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Comparing my own thoughts as they transverse my mind in regards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Between me and him, no one has to know anything about it. And if it does happen to you, best not to tell anyone. Just keep between you and yourself. If you've got a, a sheikh or a guide or a teacher, you could tell that individual. But other than that, better to keep it to yourself. Because otherwise, it might disappear. Allah might take it away. Because that's, that's the secret. And yet, it's so simple and straightforward. But until we get to that point, until we're able to accept those things that occur with us on a little basis, how are we going to accept on a, on a big basis, on a global basis, on a lifelong basis, on a basis that's eternal? How are we going to accept it on an eternal basis? This is not going to happen, unfortunately, misfortunately. So that's for us to grab on to the, to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, firmly grab on to the, to the rope of Allah azza wa because it's there. It's there. It's waiting for us. But we're the ones who are not using it. We're the ones that, when, like I said, when the light changes, we want to step on the gas, on the, the gas is America, you know, put the accelerator down. Instead of saying, oh, that's from Allah, wait a minute, there's something better that's going to come. He's speaking of the, the issue, how many times have you been running late to wherever you were going and broken road rules and whatever, then when you got there, they're like, oh, yeah, we're running 10 minutes late anyway. How many times has it happened to you? Well, it's, it's Allah. It's not a coincidence. There's no such thing. It's Allah saying, oh, there's my servant. Misfortunately, unfortunately, her kids were giving her a hard time. She misplaced the keys. The phone, whatever, wasn't charged. Don't worry. I'll bend time for her. I'll change the way the whole... That's what's going on. Look, it's not like a coincidence. That's actually what's happening. A lot of times I say, oh, okay, make the dentist his chair that doesn't work or the drill's gone off or can't find a little bit. Whatever. Allah's changing, changing things in... Like, uh, do you believe me or you don't believe me? It doesn't look like you believe me. Sorry, I've got to be frank with yourselves, even though my name's Hasan. I've got to be frank with you. You don't, you don't, don't look to me like you're buying it. It's, it's, it's there for the taking if you want it. Not for me. It's got nothing to do with me. It's him. But that's what's on offer when a person gives themselves to Allah. When a person sits, submits their own will to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, like, no offense, no offense, Yanni. I'm fasting, praying, staying away from all these things, trying to do this, trying to do that. Where's the flavor? Yeah, the guy that wakes up at whatever clock in the morning and takes, you know, whatever he takes, if he doesn't see his muscles grow and goes to the gym, if he doesn't see his muscles grow, is he going to keep going? Yes or no? He's not going to go. Mahak wa Allah. What about the person that's fasting and that's praying, that's reading Qur'an, and it's not seeing, it's not, there's no flavor. They're not seeing anything. How's their commitment going to be to the deen? How's their commitment going to be to Allah Azza wa Jal? How's that person's commitment going to be to the sunnah of the Prophet of Allah or salam or haram? And that's what's happening with us. We're doing the same thing, which is what a champion does, over and over, but there's no, there's no lazbah. There's no, you know, cherry on top. There's no icing on the cake. There's not even a cake. It was just robotic. Up, down, left, right. Up, down, don't eat, eat. Don't eat. Up, down, right, left, right. Down, up, down. Anytime someone does something, there's a, there's a there's there's a reaction to it. The chess champion, if he keeps playing chess and keeps losing, he's going to pick another. He's going to play tiddlywinks. You know that game? You guys don't know that game, huh? <laughs> it's an old school game. Who can describe? <laughs> they used to play it back in school. You get these little, 
these little bits of plastic and you flick them with another little bit of plastic, oh, it's a bit of a silly game. That's why, that's why when people want to say something silly, they say tiddlywinks. I don't know if it's an Aussie game or somewhere else. Maybe I'm getting a bit old. But, you know, so it's like a, like a waste of time. And that's what, unfortunately, that's why we don't have that zeal. Google it. That's a good thing. Tiddlywinks. Hopefully it'll come up. It can, I was like, I'm not describing it very well. Right? That's why we haven't got the zeal. That's why we haven't got the drive. That's why we got doubt in Allah. Like, all right, all right, yeah, well, on the surface it's all good. But really, 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 really deep down inside, we have doubt. There's a doubt there. Because if we didn't have doubt, we wouldn't think we were, we're not good enough. Is it on there? Yeah. Yeah, khalas, look it up and tell me what you think. I hope there's a, there's a video so you can actually watch how <laughs> inane it is. It's, in other words, useless. Right? We got doubt. We got doubt. And when a person's got doubt in Allah, that means they've got certainty in something else. Yeah? When a person's got doubt, like even if it's 0.0000001%, there's that one zero one percent point one percent belongs to something else. It belongs to myself or another or a thing or a or an ideology or a philosophy or something. And as long as that's there, Allah's part is going to say, "All right, you stay where you are." In terms of the spiritual levels, you stay where you are until we overcome those things. And that's through the tests, the trials, the tribulations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends us. That's the difficulties. What we find to be difficulties, they're the things that are, they're going to get us that, get rid of that 0.1%. Those things. The Prophet said, don't hate fitna. Don't hate it. Because it differentiates between those who are going up and those who are going around. It differentiates between them. So as an individual, if I, if I can't get to that, then how can I expect my brother or sister to get to that? How can I look at, all oh, the Muslims are like that. Oh, the Muslims are doing this. Oh, the Muslims are doing that. And that's where, inshallah, we continue with what Imam Haddad has said. Um, and the Prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is reciting a hadith. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah, Yuafi, Ni'amahu, Wa Yukafi, Wa Mazidah, Wa Salatu, Wa Salam, Ala Khayl, Anam, Wa Ala Alim, Wa Sahbihi, Wa Salam. Inna na wayna ta'alimu ta'alimu ta'akir, Wa Tadkir, Wa Nafa, Wa Antifa, Wa Lifada, Wa Istifada, Wa Dua, Ila Al-Huda. والضلالة على الخير والحث والتمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسول الله ابتغاء مرضات الله وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى Praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praise it's worthy of a beneficent bestower of bounties and favours and we ask our Lord most high to send copious and unlimited and eternal blessings and salutations upon our beloved Prophet Sayyiduna Muhammad صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم when we acknowledge the traditional owners of this land and pay our respects to the elders past and present and my bad So are there any questions about that before we before you go on for real now for real don't just like you know be polite it's not the time to be polite yes um, you know how you're saying we have doubt in Allah in terms of moving forward could it be like not doubt in Allah but fear of like ourselves going forward that's a good question you know like people the question is the fact that the, the, one of the reasons that we may not be going forward is because we fear ourselves. Yeah, of course. When, when we hold that fear to ourselves, that means we're not seeing him. We're seeing ourselves looking in the mirror and rather than seeing the greatness of Allah Azza wa Jal, Allahumma hassan khuluqi, kama hassan ta khalqi. That's the dua when you look in the mirror. Ya Allah, make my character, my disposition most excellent as you made my outward appearance most excellent. We've not seen ourselves there. Seeing his greatness, subhanahu wa ta'ala, even in how many how long I don't want to know, but how long do we spend looking in the mirror every day? Right? Whatever it may be. And how much are we remembering Allah when we're doing that? And so that is the issue. And look, people have these all of us, we have these emotional attachments in life. You know, like for example, why does a woman stay with an abusive um, what do they call them, intimate partner? Comfortable. It's, even though it's uncomfortable, it's like the worst world to be in. But, you know, that person's scared to, to see what's out there. We're all scared. We're all scared. Were to, uh, the, if it's not for the uns, for the 
lutuf of Allah Azza wa Jal, for the gentleness of Allah Azza wa Jal, for the, for the, uh, the uh, intimacy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what are we relying on, our friends? Yeah, right. They'll be like, yeah, good one, mate. Catch you next time. Oh, too busy. Call me next week. Our wives and our husbands, yeah, they've got time, but after a year or two or three or four or seven or whatever, they'll be like, yeah, good one, mate. So what in reality are we holding on to? Me, like me, what can I do? Oh, like, no matter how much people think I may be whatever I am, and no matter how much my reputation may be, when it's one on one, me and me I'm alone, I know what I've, what I've done, I know where I've been, I know what I've thought, I know what I've said, and I know who I am. And if I don't, that's where the problem is. So of course we're scared. People don't want to accept, like, but people don't want to accept Islam, for example, or any basis of Islam, because they know they've got to change, and we're the same. And we're the, we don't want to, why should I change? I'm fine, right? So and so said I'm fine, so and so said I'm fine, Dr. Fulan said I'm fine, whoever said I'm fine, and I'm fine, why should I? That's the, that's the fear. And then if I do change and I do get close to Allah, well, am I have to, have to give up my, my desires? Well, there's no doubt about that, is there? Do I have to give them up or not? Why should I? I like looking at that, smoking that, drinking that, thinking about that, feeling that. I like that feeling. I don't want to give it up. Even though it's temporal and it's just temporary both. It's not eternal. It's not, it's not a real feeling. It's only a temporary feeling. But I like it. I'm, I'm indulging in it. And when it's like a kid playing in the mud. You know, like... They don't want to leave the mud. They want to keep playing and keep playing. It's mud. It's like, you know, nasty. Yeah, but they, they like doing it. And so that's how... When I do, that's, the, that's the nafus. That's the nafus inside. And then we're scared, you know, that... You know, I can't hang out with that person. I can't go to that place. I can't drink that, that drink. I can't eat that food. I can't dress that way. I can't please that person. Really, that's what it comes down to. I can't, that person's no longer going to accept me. And because I value that person's opinion in such high esteem, then I'm not going to change. I'm just going to remain as I am, going around instead of, instead of going up. And the other things, you know, but... Mainly it's the expectations of others upon us or the society upon us or what people are going to think of us. And that's, that's the kind of big hook that really pulls people away from Allah. And, you know, what, did that, what did Abi Talib, the uncle of the Prophet, I said, I'm say? You know, how many years did he support him? He suffered with the Prophet of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam. And what did he say when he was on his deathbed? The Prophet said, just say it in my ear. He said, Ya'iruni al-Arab. The Arabs will think I'm, you know, I was scared of dying, or that, you know, you don't they'll, they'll put me on show, they'll shame me, basically. He's like the biggest supporter of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam in Mecca. Knows him like no one knows him. His uncle, he's the father of Sayyidina Ali al and Ja'far al Tayyar or Sadiq. Right? He's the father of these great human beings. He's not less than anybody, yet what held him back? And so that's what hold, you know, what, what what do you care what people think of you? It's none of your business what they think of you. That's a classic line. You always say that meme everywhere. What do you care what they think of you? And they might think of you that now, they're gonna think later, so you've got to change yourself to suit the person. No, no, change yourself to suit him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we're all scared. But if, if we're not ready to rely on Allah, then where's our Iman? Iman comes from the word what? Aman, meaning? Right? Security. So yeah, that's where we put our fear. So Ya Allah, I am scared. Ya Allah, I am afraid. Help me, Allah. I'm relying on you. And even if there were others to rely on, I wouldn't want to rely on anyone except you. And then he'll take you. That's the, the hadith we read the other time. You know, that when you walk to Allah, Allah will hasten towards you if you, you know so we need to do that that's what the hadith in the Arba'in and Nawi that 40 Nawi everyone's read that book the 40 hadith that hadith is in there we've read it but how many times have we applied it how many times have we applied it one time I spoke to one of these mashaykh in Lebanon 
He had a burn on his hand, pretty good one. And I was like, man, what happened? He goes, I, I, I've memorized the Quran. And later on, I remembered the Hadith that whoever, whoever, wherever the Quran is, this guy was for real. This guy was no mucking about. Like he wasn't just, you know, a lightweight, I'll go with the flow top dude. This guy was a heavyweight. He didn't muck around. He didn't care what people thought of him. Right? And then, then he goes, yeah, then I remembered that Hadith. And I asked the Sheikh, I said, does that mean even the people that the, that the Quran, they've memorized the Quran, do they, do they, like, are they a vessel? So the, the Quran doesn't burn, etc. And then the Sheikh said, yeah. He said, even the, the Hafid said, yeah. He said, in the next life. So what about this life? And the Sheikh didn't say anything to him. So he went and read the Hadith and, and, and ta'amalaha, like he meditated over it for days and days. And then he came to the conclusion, Alham, that yeah, indeed, that's the case. And he was, he was in a state and he was saying it and the people around him, they said as if and he put his hand into the fire and he grabbed the coal and he held onto the coal and he held onto the coal and he held on the coal and he chucked it. Nothing happened to his hand. And I'm like, okay. That's the implementation of hadith. And then this is how he burned his hand. He didn't burn his hand that time. He had a burn mark on his hand. Then I asked him, but he said, well, you got a burn mark. He said, let me finish. I'm like, all right. He goes, the next time I was in a gathering and I wanted to show off that I did it. And I grabbed the coal and I burnt my hand. Yeah? So that's the, that, that, hadith, that story's got two lessons in it. First one is, you read a hadith, implement it into your life. Trust Allah. Who's telling you the hadith? As-Sadiq al-Masduq. al hawa The most truthful of all truthful. He doesn't speak from his own whims. He's telling you that's a fact from Allah. What doubt should there be? What fear should there be there? There should be no fear. There should be no doubt. Whatsoever. So implement that hadith. Implement that hadith. And the second thing is don't rely on yourself. Leave it with him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he goes, and I never did that anymore because I knew that Allah taught me my lesson. And he knew the hadith. He had no doubt. Is there any doubt in that gentleman, that, that sheikh's mind? This is a guy I met. He told me the story. I'm not making it up. And it wasn't five million years ago in the Stone Age, right? That's when everyone thinks things happened. They think that at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, there was nothing. It's not, the guy's still alive now. If we rang him, it's Juma there in the Middle East. So if we, if we rang him, he'll tell you the story. It happened to him. If I took a photo of his hand, you'll see the burn mark on his hand. It's not like some fairy tale, once upon a time in a land far, far away. It's not, it's not the story. It's not our deen. We think it's that. Why? Because there's doubt. Because we've got doubt. And if we don't admit that to ourselves, that's the hadith. So I don't want to preempt the whole thing today. So he says, Al Imam Rahimullah Ta'ala Nafana Bihi wa Bikum. Anhu Ankum. He says, Wa awha Allahu ila Adam alayhi salam. Arba khi salim fi hinna jima'ul khayri. Laka wali waladika. خصلة لي وخصلة لك وخصلة فيما بيني وبينك وخصلة فيما بينك وبين عبادي. So, so we don't get bored. God revealed page 129 on the old on that book. Is anyone can see a copy? And what about that new book? What page is it on? Is anyone got a new book there? 138. 138 on the book with the yellow. Can everyone see? Can you guys see a copy? Can you see a copy? <laughs> Next year, isn't anyone next year got the book? Whatever it is. See a, a council that, uh, that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave. Wa awha means revealed to Sayyidina Adam. Okay, so Sayyidina Adam, the, our great grandfather, he was told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look, all of good, all the good that you can be involved in in life is based on four things basically. And then he says, one's between me and you, one's just for you, one's between you and the servants, and one is for Allah. Okay, he said, the first one that, is, that belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in other words, if we partake in that, if we worship Allah and associate none with Him, so that's what we're talking about. That doubt is an association. It's not shirk to take us out of Islam. It's not that type of shirk. Right? It's that khafi. The silent, the, the hidden shirk, if you like. The scholars used to say that's ostentation. In other words, showing off. For us, it's that doubt. 
right? Doing for having other than Allah somewhere in there in our belief system, in our own personal belief system, not the aqidah of the Ashaira or Matirudiya or anyone else, not what we learn in the books, right? Not what we heard from the sheikhs and whoever else, the teachers, but that what is truly in our heart. Saying on fire, not yet. Rats, mice. All right. So that little bit of doubt that we have, that little bit of doubt, that's what Allah is saying to us. Worship me and none other than me, irrespective of whatever circumstance, situation, condition you're in. Yeah? Which is what we were talking about previously. Okay. Then the next one is, as for the one that is yours, it's your deeds. You do them and I reward you. Okay, that, that's a, that's a big one for us to, to kind of reflect on. Because sometimes when we do a deed, what happens? We feel good about ourselves. Oh, I feel it's gave 10 bucks. Well, <laughs> but it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that gave me the money. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that gave me the tawfiq to give that. that it's actually that person's money that you gave it. You're not doing them a favor. There's no favors like that. It's actually Allah gave you that money to give to that person. And you do it with that no fear, right? With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, elevation. Allah will elevate you. You go to the next level, bi Azza wa Jal. As for the one that is between me and you, or between you and me, subhanahu wa ta'ala, it, it, it says here, it is, that your, it, it is that your place is to pray. And it's not pray, it's supplicate. The word in Arabic is du'a. So it's not, pray is not a very good translation. To supplicate, right? Isn't that what we do? Isn't that the one who firmly, completely, utterly and totally believes and is convinced that only Allah can do it? Well, how are we going to get anything done? Got to pray. Supplicate, in other words. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make du'a, du'a to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alayka du'a wa la Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he responds. He answers the prayers that we make, the supplications that we make. So that's what he told Sayyidina Adam. And the one that, that is between you and my servants, so the rest of us, how we do it, treat people as you want them to treat you. How old a, a statement is that? How old an axiom is that? It's Pretty simple, isn't it? So he's saying, make it easy for yourself. And your, and your what? Offspring, which is who? Who are the, who are the children of Adam? What are their names? Right? Amina and Fatima and Aisha and, and Muhammad and Abu Fattah and Haysim. That's us. We're the children of Adam. That's all of us, in other words. All of us, the regime, we're all under that umbrella. All are under that umbrella that live that way. It's easy. But it has to be done with full conviction. Tamam? Okay, then the next part of it is وَفِي صُحَفِ إِبْرَاهِيمِ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ وَعَلَى He says وَعَلَى الْعَاقِلِ أَنْ يَكُونَ مُمْسِكًا لِلِسَانِهِ عَارِفًا بِزَمَانِهِ مُقْبِلًا عَلَى شَأْنِهِ وَعَلَى الْعَاقِلُ وَعَلَى الْعَاقِلِ أَنْ تَكُونَ لَهُ أَرْبَعَ سَاعَاتِ So he says It is written in the scrolls of Abraham or Ibrahim alayhi salam the the intelligent man. Look, in the Arabic, it doesn't say man. Al-aqil is an absolute. It's gender, not gender-based. But since the beginning, our translator has used gender-specific terms. In the scrolls of Adam, it says the intelligent person, the intelligent one should hold... Okay, let's just stick to the text. And the intelligent man should hold his tongue, know his times, and attend to his business. He should have four hours, one to... And then, so they said four hours... And then in the Arabic it says, فَسَاعَةٌ يُنَاجِي فِيهَا رَبَّهُ وَسَاعَةٌ يُحَاسِبُ فِيهَا نَفْسَهُ وَسَاعَةٌ يَفْضِي فِيهَا إِلَىٰ إِخْوَانِهِ الَّذِينَ يَبْصِرُونَهُ بِعُيُوبِ نَفْسِهِ وَسَاعَةٌ يَخْلِي فِيهَا بَيْنَ نَفْسِهِ وَبَيْنَ شَهَوَاتِهَا يعني المباحة. So he said there's four parts of the day. So there's four principles by which to live on. Right? Who can remember the first one? 
It's right there in front of you. You can cheat. It's all right. All right, two, worship Allah and not to associate anything with Him. They're the four principles. The second, hello, I can't hear. I'm a bit I'm getting old. No, no, not, I had the old ones, the ones we just read. So the one, the, the four principles that Allah was told to say in the Adam. They're the four principles to live by, right? Not to associate, worship only Allah and not to associate any part. It's a revision already, so. Right? And so the other one is that we do and Allah gives us the rewards. That's, that's how it works with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And between us and Allah, right? We make the supplication and what does Allah do? Answers. And the last one? Treat others as you want to be treated. So they're the principles to live by. And now, this is the way to divide up one's time. The first one was to Sayyidina Adam, our great-grandfather. And this one is to Sayyidina Ibrahim, our grandfather. And the first one is four hours, four times, one to commune with his Lord, one to call himself to account, one to see his brothers who help and assist him, and one when he releases his soul to its lawful pleasures. So this is the way that we should be spending our time, basically. Okay, this, this hadith, the, first, the other hadith, I couldn't find a, the, the, the citation for it. I mean, I didn't, didn't have hours and hours to look for it, but I couldn't, I couldn't find the citation for it. But this, this hadith, it's uh, Ibn Asakir, he, he, he narrates it, and there's a few others that narrate it as well. It's not in any of the sihah in Bukhari or Muslim. But it's still, it's still a hadith that's narrated by many, many narrators. And so he says that, who knows how many, how many um, books Allah Azza wa Jal revealed? This is like trivia questions. We should have got some prizes. Four. Four. Okay, what are they? Not you, Hajj. The Quran. What's the Bible called in Arabic? Injil. Torah. And, and the, the Zabur. All right. Who's the Zabur revealed to? No, not bad, mashallah. Pretty good. All right. And how many scrolls did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveal? Oh, okay. It's going to be harder. This is the, what do they call it? The, the, ha- Who's? Musa and that, that, is that what you said as well? So that's, that's two people who received the scrolls. Right? So you're not wrong. How many altogether? 100 scrolls. MashaAllah. 100. How many? Who to? 50 were sent to Sayyidina Ibrahim. Is it 50 sent to a sheath. 50 sent to Sayyidina Sheath, the son of? Adam. Exactly. Adam, Adam. Right? He's the son of Adam. All of us are sons and daughters of Adam. So 50 scrolls were sent because, you know, there was corruption. Qabir, Qatar, Qabir, Cain killed Abel. That's when first devil worshipping was worshipped on. Because, you know, when, when he killed Abel, he ran away. And he went and started worshipping the devil. Because the devil was the one in his ear telling him to do it. And he took hold of him. And, astaghfirullah alayhi. So then Allah which I kept on revealing. That's 30, 30, uh, 50 afwan to sheath. Then? 10. Then Sayyidina Ibrahim? Yep. 10. And Sayyidina Idris? 33 to Sayyidina Idris. And then uh, Sayyidina Ibrahim, 10. And Sayyidina, um, Allah must say Muhammad, Sayyidina Musa before the Torah. 10 as well. I think I missed one of them. It is 30, not 33, half one. 30, not 33. So they're the different scrolls that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala released, revealed to different prophets. So in amongst those, of his suhaf Ibrahim. So Ibrahim got the suhaf, and that, as, as you mentioned, exactly. And in there it was mentioned that the intelligent individual, al-aql an yakuna mumsikan li Right? So the intelligent person, in other words, the intelligent person, the word in Arabic is what? Aql for intelligence. Aql. And the word aqala means to bind, means to hold back. So our intelligence, right, the purpose of it in the spiritual realm, the spiritual perspective, is to hold our desires back. Right? Because if we just followed our desires, We'd be worse than animals when I was a bit. So that's the that's the, the point of the brain. That's the point of the intellect more specifically rather than the brain. 
And that's how we know, that's the way to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what Allah Azza wa Jal wants in the first instance. Once our desires are held back, then our spirit can grow and be elevated in those things. So that's the first thing. So the, the person with intelligence, the first thing is they should be able to hold the desires. First of which is what? The tongue. The tongue. That's the, and we did how many weeks? We went for like 20 weeks, half the year, mashallah, one time, talking about the vices of the tongue. Afat al Right? And so we know the hadith of Sayyidina Mu'ad ibn Jabal. He was talking to the Prophet of Islam and he said, Oh, you know, do we get, do we get judged for what we say? Right? The Prophet freaked out. He said, Takhalutka ummaka ya Mu'ad. It'd be better for you had you not been born than to say these words. What do you mean? And because Mu'ad, he was extremely intelligent. He wasn't just a regular run of the mill Sahabi. He was a scholar of the Sahabis, Mufti of the Sahabis, actually. There was a panel of Muftis and he was on that panel. 12, some say 15. But mainly 12 of them, they used to sit with the Prophet and he used to teach him the jurisprudence. Okay? So that's why the Prophet was hiding. He's like, what? What are you talking about? You should know this. You've been studying long enough under the feet of the Prophet or at the feet of the Prophet of, of Allah to send that you should know this. That's why he said a hard word. He said, he said, um, he says, Hal yukubbu? So is there any other reason, look what the Prophet said. He said, is there any other reason that people get dragged on their faces to hellfire except by what their tongues have stored in their, in their own scrolls, in their own uh, hisabat, in their own accounts, deed of, deeds of account. In other words, that's the big deal. The Prophet's telling us to protect your tongue, basically you'll be sweet. Basically, you'll get through the test. Pray and do the, the, the you know, fast and do the zakat and don't overdo it in terms of haram. But be careful what you say. Be careful what you say. And that means be careful what you watch. Like those shows, I was visiting someone the other time, they had one of those like Hollywood shows, gossip shows, you know. And all they do is talk about people. I don't know how people can watch that stuff. People don't even know and who cares what they're doing anyway. It's a whole show for like however long it goes. It's a whole industry. It's not even a show. It's an industry without you know, reporting or spying on people and gossiping about what people do. And so it's, it's part of the culture and the society in which we live in. And so we're easily prone to it. And as we said previously, people think they're off. Oh, I know everything about everyone, so I must be somebody. I must have a, state, a position or a status in society. First one, where it says, عَارِفًا لِزَمَانِهِ In translation, it should be, knows his time. Like we've got to know the time we're living in. Yeah, we can't, we can't be naive. We can't live in a dream world. We can't do that. And that's why when Sayyidina Jibreel, alayhi salam, he came to the Prophet, alayhi salam, he asked him about, what did he, you know, that hadith, and he taught him about, he said, asked him about Islam. Yeah? And what else did he ask him about? What is Islam? He said, what else? Iman. Iman. What is? Islam. And one more thing. Islam. Right? That's the last one. It's got to be there. <laughs> You've got, to be, you've got to understand the times in which you're living. You've got to understand when so-and-so politician stands up, what's he on about? Hey, he's saying A, B, C, D, but what does he really mean by A and by C and by D? The people around me, who are my friends? Who are my, who are my enemies? Who's going to help me to be closer to Allah? Who's going to detriment me on the path to Allah? Azawajal? We have to be aware of these things. We can't be dopes. Oh, yeah, I pray, I fast, okay, it's all good. No, you can't be like that. You can't be silly. You can't be naive. And how many times has it come for you in your life where you see someone who's fasting, see someone who's praying, see someone who's doing something, and you deal with them, you're like, oh my God, what a disaster. And what did the Prophet say? A deen al-mu'amala. It's two words. The deen, we know what that word means. Mu'amala, dealings. Deal, deen is dealing. So people don't know how to deal. The deen is pretty, you know, like they know how to organize themselves and talk with you and sell and buy and trade and keep a promise and whatever else, give you advice and whatever. And that means the deen is not very good. So it's not just on the up, down, right? It's not on just based on that. That's got to be done. But it's not based on that. It said, Muqbilan ala sha'nihi. And attend to his business. So what that means is the Prophet also mentioned the hadith. He said, Min husn Islam al-Mu'min or al-Muslim, tarkuhu ma la ya'ni. 
from the, the perfection of one's faith is to leave that which does not concern one. I know like, you know, the good old social media, you see saying it's got no relevance to us and we just keep chasing it, you know. Or, or the, when the Mashiach talk about things that are going on between, the, between themselves, we start to take sides and we start to fight and defend that person and it's got nothing to do with you. Don't take on, don't involve yourself, waste your time basically in things that don't concern you. And that's the, you know, what's that one? One of, one of them is fail and the other one is, you know, on the, on the basically, is that what it is? Win, fail? You don't need to watch people failing. It's all right. I know it's fun it's, and all that. But it's not very nice. Imagine if you slipped over on your face. You wouldn't want people to like video you and put you on YouTube and, and then people laugh at you and you know, call you a buffoon or whatever. Everyone falls over. Even tigers and lions and you know, the most graceful creatures on earth, they fall over. They trip, they break their legs. They, uh, no one's perfect. The perfection doesn't exist. Except with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, you know, getting involved, watching all those things, it's not good for our soul. Be concerned and be involved with the things that are relevant to you. The things that are not relevant to you, leave them to others. Particularly gossip and talking and, you know, uh, insinuations about people's characters and what they do and what they don't do and all these types of things. He said, وَعَلَى الْعَاقِلِ أَن تَكُونَ لَهُ أَرْبَعَ سَاعَاتِ so, the intelligent person should maintain those three things. Be careful about their tongue, understand the situation they're in, and be busy with their own affairs. So that goes back, this is like a kind of update to what Sayyidina Adam told us, or what Sayyidina Adam was told by, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about those four principles, in addition to those. And then he said, there's four things that we basically should be doing. The first one, فَسَاعَةٌ يُنَاجِي فِيهِ رَبَّهُ One should have four hours. And, and when they say سَاعَةٌ, they don't, they don't literally mean hours. They mean periods of time in the Arabic language. So four periods of time during the day, basically. Or even during life, one can say. One to commune with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need quiet time. You know what they call it? Downtime or mindfulness. Whatever. You need to have that. And that's not just a prayer time. You need time to, to talk to Allah. You, know, you need time to, to complain to Allah. That's who you're supposed to complain to, not your BFF. You're supposed to complain to Allah. You need time to tell Him, this is what's going on with me, Allah. He knows. And he wants to hear it from you. He wants to hear. Why do you think Allah Azza wants to hear it from you? He yeah, certainly. What other reason? Exactly. Because that's a sign to Allah that you know your own insignificance and inca incapacity. That's what I was like, oh, beautiful. There's my servant understanding. Allah. Whoever abases themselves, Allah you know, ennobles that person, increases the honor of that and the nobility of that person. I'm not going to go for long. Just finish it and we're out. Inshallah ta'ala. So bear with me. If it wasn't in the middle of the hadith, we would have gone, but it's in the middle of the hadith. So he says, so you need that time. Whether it's at the beach, or in the wherever the forest, or in a dark room, or whatever it is that, that suits you, you need that time, daily. Otherwise, you're going to lose your marbles. One to call himself to account. So we all need that time, right, to think about what we said, what we did, how we acted during the day. What we could have done, what we should have done, what we shouldn't have done, but we did do. We need that time to take that account. We need that time. To see, like, what was I thinking? How did I think that? Why did I do that? Take stock of our own affairs, so to speak. And then, and then another one, the one should spend time with, with, with those people that one loves, brothers, sisters, as the case may be, to, to work out, because sometimes you can't work things out on your own. Sometimes, uh, no matter how much you sit there, you need to actually speak about that thing. You need to have a conversation with someone, particularly women particularly more so than men, men, men being more social in that regard. They need to talk about things. And so do men, but we're like, yeah, yeah, okay, cool. You know, so women are not like that. Women need to talk and talk and, and express their emotions and their feelings. Take notes, boys, so when you get married, you can be ready, inshallah. Right? They need to talk. And that's, that's, that's how it is. And you've got to do that. 
So don't talk about stuff that is unnecessary. I know she said, and I know he said. There's no doubt he said it, and there's no doubt she said it, and she shouldn't have said it, and you're aghast that it was said. I get it, but it's not really relevant to you in your life. Talk about the things that are going to help you progress. Talk about the things that are going to help you overcome the shackles of what so-and-so said because they were upset or they were having a bad day or they were whatever, 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 whatever. And they're probably even sorry for it. So don't, don't let yourself be dragged down by someone, someone's own you know, vicissitudes of life and difficulties and whatever they have in their life. Talk about the things that are going to help you in your progression to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your understanding of the innermost. And that means there's got to be trust. Those people that you your brothers and sisters, those people that are there for you, you got to trust that that person will give you the advice that's necessary to help you overcome your misgivings and misguidings. That's an important part of, of the day, or of one's time. And if it's your spouse, all the better. It's only the time that you need to just chill out. Right? To, to let yourself hang loose, or whatever the word is these days. Okay, what is it? Tell me what it is. What's the time? Chillax, whatever. That's old, that word, no? What do you do when you just hang out? God, you just wrote. We had millions of words for that, man. Chill, early. We had so many words for just doing nothing back in... Maybe you guys are too busy. So no downtime? As if. This is the downtime. Busy wasting time. Well said. Well said. Right? So you need that time to do the things, and really, phone is not a downtime. It's not a downtime. Like the research is coming out, it's bad for your eyes, it's bad for your brain, fries your brain. This is bad news all the way around. Right? If you need that time to do whatever you need to do, do it at that time, but don't make it a habit. It's bad news. Right? So remember that time we went on the, on the camp hush? We were in the camp. How long ago? How long? At least nearly seven to eight years ago. Alright, seven or eight years ago. Seven or eight years ago, we went in the camp. We went to an area, there's no reception. 2010. 2010? Mashallah, that's a long time ago. We went in the camp, there was no reception, there was no toilets, there was no running water, there was nothing except land. That's all there was there. And the, the back then, before everyone had smartphones, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Nothing about there wasn't even smartphones. Right, with the guys, the young blokes we went with, there was no reception, they didn't know what to do. They pulled out their phones. Remember, I've told you that story, you've heard it many times, I imagine. And they were, they were doing playing with their phones, and we talked about it back then 2010. We said, That's going to be an epidemic, don't get hooked to your phone, watch out for the phone, it's going to get you. And that's what's going on today. That's what's going on today. That was like. Never had like the Nokia's, eh? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's sad, bro. Or right, right, at least today there's something super entertaining on it, right? So to speak, for a limited time. So you need that, you need that time. You need that time to do something that's more bad. Play tennis. Does anyone play that anymore? Oh no, tennis is out. Okay, squash, <laughs> ping pong, table tennis, badminton, right? Whatever. You know, kick the football, well, downtime. Isn't that the first one though? Sorry? Isn't that, isn't that what we have the first point now? Downtime, quiet time. That's with Allah. Okay. Good point. That's a good question. So the first one is time where we can just spend time with Allah, thinking about Allah. This is time for you. Me time. That's what you call it. <laughs> you, there's a word. I knew it. Yeah, Me time. Me time. All right. Gosh, you don't even know your own cliches and phrases right me time and it, look that could be shopping it's more about as long as it's more about shopping you're not spending money in the wrong places overspending money and certainly not getting money on, on credit on this type of halal way a haram way excuse me right so you need me time whether it's taking a bubble bath well, that's what people talk I don't know if anyone does it or a mineral yeah, salt bath ones ones, right hey, I heard someone was telling me it's like crazy stuff going on that's good do it if you need a massage, make sure it's halal. Go do it, right? If you need to run and do weights and swim and what, go do it. But make that time for yourself. Don't rob yourself. That's what that's what Allah is telling us. That's what, Ibrahim, that's what Allah is telling Sayyidina Ibrahim from tens of thousands of years ago. 
Don't rob yourself. Don't rob yourself by just like, you know what I mean? That's, you're robbing yourself of your life. That's precious time that belongs to you. Don't give it to, to someone else. Yeah, probably that's not a bad, that's a good thing as well, when you have me. So people even post their me time on social media. Gosh, that's sad. That's why it's hard to understand that. Like, a lot of people actually post off their workouts. Right. And they go, these people actually have psychological issues. Scientists are saying that. That's the best one. For anyway, like, we think there's a lot of things that go on with that, and, and it's a never-ending story, and we don't want to bag it too much, but... You know, we just don't want to fall into that trap. That's why we have to understand the time when we live in. That's one of the things that Allah told Sayyidina Ibrahim thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. That's the time we live in. You can't just trust everything you hear and everything that comes along. And, and really, what it, all the whole thing is just about convenience. We're selling our souls for convenience. It's, that's the reality. We're selling our health for convenience. We're selling our intelligence for convenience. Well, that's what it comes down to. So anyway, let's leave that point because we want to talk about me time because we all love me time, right? Whether it's lighting incense and smelling candles or whatever, as long as it's halal and it's not israf. In other words, we're not overspending money in the wrong places where it belongs somewhere else. We're not borrowing money in a haram way. If you borrow in a halal way, that's okay. You're not borrowing money in a haram way and using it. And it shouldn't be me time like 23 and a half hours and the rest of them crammed into half an hour. It's got to be reasonable. If you've got responsibilities to your children, to your husband, to your wife, to your work, to your employees, to your employer, to your government, to your, whatever it may be, you have to fulfill those responsibilities first. And hopefully the me, the me time that you have will help you to fulfill those responsibilities. So once, once you do that, once you get into that pattern, inshallah, it'll become easier to differentiate the things that are necessary for you in your life and the things that are unnecessary for you, the superfluous things, right? by focusing on that which is relevant. Okay, so any questions about any of those things? Don't go and take a two-hour bath and say the Sheikh told me to do it. <laughs> <laughs> it actually goes back to the first, the first chapter. Like we're going back to that. Yo, this is the, the conclusion. We had, we had like the time we spent and we were saying, uh, back in the, the, the early chapters, we're saying actually the first first chapter, I think it was the introduction. Uh, we we have we allocate our time for play, work, ibadah. So once we get to the point where where our work is more than our play, so in our relaxing time, that's when you become a real man because you get become like a real like a real man and poor woman, real woman. Person of Allah, yes. certainly. Jazakallah khairan. So, like they're, they're the things that. The, the thing, the, these little things, they make who we are. They determine our character, they determine our disposition, they determine our place for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Any questions?